Everybody, Mark Claiborne here for the Photographer Academy. Uh, thanks for joining us uh, live on uh, another kind of great se session. Um, if you're just tuning in for the very first time, the Photographer Academy is an online training company for photographers. Uh, we're in our 13th year now in 2021, as it were, and we create kind of content to kind of move, move you from a kind of an amateur to a pro level and some pro to advanced pro level and things really. If you haven't kind of headed over to the Photographer Academy, I'm sure the link's below, please join us. But we're live, so uh, get the questions in live. Um, we've got a great new model with us for today, uh, Jay, and we're creating some physique images. So we're gonna go through the kind of the basic lighting on that. You'll have seen something similar when we were doing the kind of the, uh, P, uh, the PVC edge lighting in the past and things really, but now we're gonna be doing it on the, bod, uh, the body. But we thought we'd start off with a little bit more of a portrait, a dynamic portrait uh, to kind of really get things going. So because we're live, as I said, please get your questions in. Brandon's on the desk and he'll basically kind of read them out to me as they're coming through and things really. So setup of today, the first part of it is working with two lights. Uh, we've got a background light. They're all Elinchrom ELC uh, Pro HD heads. I've got two 500s and two 1000 heads. And um, I've pretty much got nothing special on anything today as far as I'm concerned. I've got a, a simple kind of reflector dish that comes with it on the, uh, the background light. This is kind of uh, gonna make the white wall pure white, okay? Um, then up in the sky, uh, we've got a snoot. And you're either a fan of snoots or you're not a fan of snoots. I'm not a fan of snoots, but there are times that it's the right thing to actually use within the, the kind of the portrait and things really. So we're, we're technically gonna bring Jay in, uh, not Jay who works for us, Jay the model, all right? Uh, and basically you're gonna get him in place. And we're gonna create fir first of all, uh, kind of a, a little bit of a silhouette kind of image, all right? So by doing that, we, we basically will kind of make him uh, completely kind of black without this light kind of coming on. Now, if you're not used to our equipment and everything else, let me just kind of grab my meter for a minute. Um, we're using a uh, Canon Mark III, quite an old kind of bod, bod body now. I'm sure it's due for replacement soon. We're tethering. Uh, through with a tether tools cable and that goes through into a standard lap laptop and basically we'll be seeing the images coming up in capture one uh, we haven't upgraded our capture one recently in fact really so uh, we're pretty much running one for about 18 months now um, on top of the camera here is the trigger and this is basically an elinchrom sky port and this tells the different groups or all of the groups that the lights are on to fire or not fire, okay? Um, it's, it's kind of got um, lots of settings on here, but uh, in the way that the Skyport works, I can either tell a light that is set in group one to fire, or I can set all of the groups to fire, but I can't set a group one and group four to fire together. It has to either be one group, i.e. one, two, three, or four, or all of the groups together to get it, okay? Uh, Meter-wise and things really, a Sekonic, um, and we've basically got um, a Sekonic that uh, speaks to my Elinchrom. So on the bottom of the 478DR, it's got a little Elinchrom badge. So let me move up there a minute just so you can see it. It's just got a little Elinchrom badge, sorry, Bradman just here, and that means it's linked to the Elinchrom lights and things as well, all right? So um, that's what we wanna do. Uh, one of the things I do though, is I basically switch the modeling bulb off. Um, so I'm not as tall as Jay, uh, but basically with a snoot, I tend to actually put it on so we can see its position, see where Jay's gonna be. And then just before I start to do the shoot, I'll actually knock that off because I can really cook the light um, and everything else with it. Uh, look, uh, enough about it. Let's, let's get on and do a shot, is it? Because you want to see what we're kind of doing. Jay, do you want to come on set for me? Uh, if you just go onto that sil silver dot on the floor, please, again, if you could. That's great. Let me, um, is that light come on? Yep. So is that on your face? Yeah. Yeah, well, let me just come back a touch. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is just fire, in fact, the background light. So this is group four, right? So if I basically take the shot, um, we'll see what it's gonna do. And then we've got pretty much a near silhouette image. We've got a lot of daylight running in here today, and it is F4, but it's just giving you know, a fraction of a, a, 
a kind of a, um, amount of light, but we could kind of block it all off. But really what we want to do is actually add some tone to Jay's face. Okay, so this is what we really want to need to set on is to make sure he's in the right place for it. And any of the light spilling onto the background behind is obviously any light that is spilling over the top of Jay and basically it's going in there. Jay, let's kind of do up the jacket a bit. Can we, can, does the collar go up as well? Does the collar go up in height, will it? Yeah. I'm feeling a matrix moment coming on, to be honest. That's great. Let's almost kind of just fake the pulling together. That, yeah. That's it, okay. So here we've got, uh, lower the chin a little bit more. Here we go. Uh, looking for that editorial kind of look and feel. So that's our kind of light from above. But when we combine the lights together, of course, we've got the kind of the white light behind creating a silhouette. And then we've just got this light coming onto the face to create it. Let's raise the chin a touch. That's good, just there. And again for me, lower the chin again. Let's kind of bring it pretty tight together. It's good, just there. Let me just pop that light into your face just a little bit more. Just bring it down just a touch. Last week was so funny in filming. The dogs next door came out. <laughs> they were howling and doing everything. Yeah, fingers crossed they're not going to be doing that today. Let's do I've just moved that light. So I always want to position back into group one now to actually see if it's going to do its job still. Yeah, it does brilliantly. So now we can combine those together. So group all, let's do it again. Okay, that's great. Just bring uh, one hand up and almost kind of pull it together in the middle. That's great, just there. Lower the chin more. Cool. Take this hand out and wrap it across your body or stick it in a pocket. That's it. Again, lower the chin. Stick it in a pocket. Let's put both hands in pockets, shall we? And kind of almost step forward to me just a little bit. Whoa. And now almost lean back. Can you lean back this look? Make sure that light is on your face. Ray, raise the chin more. Again, that's good. And again for me. And obviously at this point, it'd be good if we had an assistant to basically kind of re make sure that that kind of light was actually doing its job in the right place and so on with it. I'm just gonna increase that backlight a little bit, in fact. So in the background, from the sky port here, I'm gonna press the plus button five times. One, two, three, four, five. That has put the background up by half a stop. So that's gonna give me a brighter and lighter edges to the image as well. What I don't wanna do is kind of burn through, um, uh, otherwise we're gonna get that kind of halation coming through with it. That's it, let's do it. Raise the chin a touch more. Excellent, it's there. Turn the body to this way a little bit, fully with the feet as well if you can. Make sure your head's still in that light for me please, Jay, if you can. Step to me a touch more. That's it, turn the body that way again. Lean the head into here, making sure that light's in your face. Turn the head to me again, it's good just there. Just bring one of the hands up to actually bring it together again. Cool, that's there, let's do it. Can you actually bring both sides together? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's it, let's do it. Keep it, love it, again for me. Yeah, it's really cool, like it. So great. Uh, Jay, if you whip off and just pop on your uh, boxing shorts or whatever it is, please, and let's go to skin. Um, so yeah, we've got some uh, nice images there already, and you can see this snooted light is really kind of giving us a, a great effect on the pop in the face. It's pretty much near silhouette. As I said, we'd usually try and minimize any of the reflected light around, around them. Uh, commercially tends not to be a pure white bright background, just a, a slightly underexposed white background. Uh, why? Because then uh, it allows them to actually uh, cut out quicker and actually clean up quicker if that's what they want instead of actually any feed, uh, feedback coming through. For the physique image, um, we're going to be using the strip boxes. Uh, we have completed a film, in fact, today using Jay uh, on a, a pure physique. We've done a part one and a part two. Um, so you can head over, uh, head, head over to the acad academy in the next few... Um, oh, in fact, let's do that first, shall we? Um, in the next few... Uh, weeks and basically months and be able to actually see all those films as well but uh, 
Yeah, what we're, look, we're looking at now is that kind of physical. So we're kind of uh, just got kind of skin. Uh, what I should have done before we kind of just put the strips on, and I'm going to go backwards. It'll only take me seconds. But let's do that same thing like we just did with the coat on, but just with skin. Once we've done that, we'll switch these other lights back on. Sorry, Jay, just back onto there for me. This is what I used to look in a younger life. I used to look like that. Not really. He knows it. Let's uh, go quite strong, Jay. That's good. Just there. Is your head in the light? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Quick there. One sec. Quick test. So we can see now just that light from above is doing its job again. Let's almost kind of just come across as well with it. It's good. Strong. Lower the chin more. Great. Turn the body that way for me a little bit and turn the head back to me. Keep it. And again. Right. So uh, it just to prove that, you know, we can still use that same technique that we don't need to change it all. Right. Let me um, switch this one on again. And we're going to kind of um, revisit, uh, to some extent, kind of talk, uh, talking about clock and compass. But this is really to do with the kind of the visuals of where these lights are. Um, we don't need the background light now. So I'm just going to switch that one off. Um, and in the same way, when we're work working with um, the strip boxes, if I want to actually turn them on and off as far as the modeling bulb uh, from the meter, I can with it. So left hand side is group three. Let's have a look at that one. Keep it. Okay, that's going to kind of give us our left hand body light. Yeah. And the right hand edge as well. So as you can see, both of them are on, on group three. And then we've got our group one, which is the light from above. Straight at me again. There's our kind of key light. Yep, so it's dy a dynamic by itself. And you can see the modeling bulbs just visible on the sides. Let's now kind of put both on together. So all, let's do it. Let's kind of go hard knuckle kind of thing with it. It's good just there. Lower the chin again. It's great. So we've got a really nice kind of skin image without any trouble. Slightly turn the body towards that side for me, can we? That's good. And turn the head to me again. And we've got a, a kind of a really strong dynamic photograph. I, I personally like a deeper shadow like we're seeing because I'm kind of trying to create the muscle tone actually on the, bod, uh, the body. So remember, dynamic light needs to come from behind the, sub, uh, the subject. And then whatever the frontal light is, if you want to go for a softness and a big light source, then obviously go for a big light source, perhaps a big soft box, whatever it would be. But if you want something more dynamic, like we're trying to create, um, obviously a smaller light source like we've got here uh, is going to give us that little bit more dynamic as well. Right, I mentioned about the kind of the clock and cub, uh, compass, yeah? So if we've only got two lights and we want to do some um, skin images, so kind of for physique and everything else, the first things first, um, try and keep the distance of the lights exactly the same as they were from each other. other. Uh, in this case, what I'm going to do is just switch group. Switching on my, me on my meter again. Remember, we're live, guys. So if you do want to get any questions in, please feel free. Group one, I'm going to switch the modeling bulb off. There we go, just so it doesn't cook. And we're just now into group uh, three, the two, uh, two lights, yeah? So this is a kind of a three o'clock plus light. So that's be between the three and the four. And we've got a 10 to 11 o'clock light in the background. So let's just see these two. And then this is going to kind of give us a, a quite a dynamic kind of image, no matter what, where we're still getting our good muscle tone uh, coming through it. And we've got this great edge light kind of coming through. Now, if I want to really create just muscle and I'm not interested too much in uh, the face. Yep. Yeah, uh, if we run the light now at, say, the three o'clock or just behind the three o'clock position and say the, uh, just behind the nine o'clock. Okay. So um, some of this light will slightly spill onto Jay's face. Lower the chin, Jay, for me. That's great, mate. 
um, slight, a slightly spill onto the face, but you can see pretty much, because the light is from behind, it's kind of given us no real detail here. Yes, and none in the face. So remember, once more, if I just switch this overhead light on, as far as on the sky port's concerned, it's always on. I just switch the modeling bulb off. So I go to all. Same again, Jay. Excellent, mate. Relax. Um, now we start to actually put the detail actually onto the face and we still get all that great muscle tone going through. If you want to work with just the two lights, um, then perhaps try using the, uh, the kind of just behind the three and just behind the nine. And this will create a slight hatchet lighting, which means there's going to be kind of a black line uh, running down the, fore, uh, the forehead, straight down the nose. Uh, and that's going to kind of give this almost hatchet like we've kind of split it in half and things really. Let's do it again, straight at me. Um, so that is just the group three and you can see that hatchet that black line coming through and remember all I've got to do now in the same way is switch the overhead on as well and we get all of those lights coming together so as far as the physique thanks Jay you're done mate absolutely brilliant what a star so as far as the kind of the physique is concerned what we're trying to do all the time is kind of bring some drama and we know we've discussed it for lots and lots of times now that if we want to bring drama into the image the light has to come from behind because that is going to give us our tone if you were really doing this in a commercial way i would watch part two that we've done with light in physique um, because then we're working with up to five lights in fact and it really does sculpt out the body and things really so that's our kind of uh, five live demonstration done. Uh, Brandon, any questions there at all before we go live? Before we finish, I mean? <laughs> Just the one about your camera stand again. Oh, no. <laughs> Just the one about my camera stand again. It's, are you sure it's not by the, cub, the, the company, the guy who works for them? Um, it's Electra. Uh, I've got no idea. It's so old. It's made in, Thai, in Thailand. It's basically as old as I am. And if you do work for the company and you'd like to replace it, then please feel free with that. <laughs> but it's funny how we always get that question on, needed, on each one. Um, studio stand is great if you've got a permanent studio set up, whereas a tripod's going to do a, equally a great job for you and things really. When you're looking to kind of have a staticness, and control of image and light. Uh, the likes of a studio stand or a tripod is great because you can pretty much leave the camera in the same place, then obviously go ahead, move a, a light or whatever it is and come back to it. Never being afraid then, of course, once you've kind of done the basics, you kind of whip it off the stand and then you start to shoot free, uh, freehand as well. Anything else there, Brandon? Look, guys, thanks for joining us live again on Academy. Uh, it's great to actually see so many of you subscribing uh, as well to the actual U uh, the YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me live. I'm Mark Claiborne. And uh, remember, go over to the Photographer Academy and join up there as well. Take care. Bye-bye.